is your financial expert and master mindset coach, Janae Cordy. Welcome everyone. Today we are going to talk about decision making and more specifically complex decision making. Because why not go ahead and take it up a notch in the new year, huh? So wow guys, I've been doing some research on decision making and coming from someone who is paid to make a ton of decisions in a day, not to mention all of the personal decisions we all make on a daily basis, my mind was blown by all of the scientific theory and research out there on the art of decision making. And I specifically chose the word art purposefully because I do still believe decision making is ultimately an art even after diving into the massive, and I mean massive, scientific data on the subject. This is because although I'm going to be deciphering some basic scientific theories on the matter, I still believe we are never to discount the number one deciding factor when making major decisions, which is our own inner guidance, our heart, our intuition, the little voice that dwells inside of us. So this is especially true when it comes to personal life matters that directly impact you and your personal goals. So we all know by now we cannot predict or control the future. This isn't a spoiler alert to anyone, right? (laughs) I mean, if it is, I apologize, uh, but you may want to start on an earlier podcast to start changing up the old mindset before you continue with this one, Uh, just as a quick PSA announcement (laughs) for the rest of us. Uh, The fact that we can't control the future is what makes decision-making a challenge in the first place, right? Control is just an illusion, and if we could see the outcome of of our decisions in our magic crystal balls, first of all, I think life would actually be pretty boring, and second of all, we would have no need for podcasts like this or risk professionals like me to analyze risk decisions for organizations because we would all know all of the answers all of the time with 100% certainty. So I want to discuss decision making, but as a disclaimer, there are no risk-free decisions in life. There are no guarantees or sure things in life. The only guarantee I can give you is that you will surely learn as you go and that is an extremely valuable thing if your mindset allows you to accept that statement as the truth. Part of the excitement of life is not 100% knowing the outcome and going for it anyway, right? Just ask every casino owner how they make their millions. (laughs) Okay, so let's get started. Making a decision has three basic components. Number one, linking the value of a decision with the desirability of a consequence. Number two, the need to reduce uncertainty. Remember last week's podcast. This goes back to being a living, breathing human being again. We fear the unknown and must minimize it in the decision-making process. Number three, the need to establish preferences for outcomes, including outcomes achieved with different probabilities. So in other words, what is the statistical probability or other likelihood that you are going to get the outcome that you want? To simplify this even more, when making a basic decision, ask yourself these questions in the decision-making process. Am I asking myself the right question? This has to do with framing the question correctly. Do I understand the problem or issue? And do I have all of the information available to me at this moment? Do I know everything I need to know or what I am able to know? What can I do right now? In other words, 
What are my options? And most importantly, in my opinion, what do I want? Ooh, the tough one, right? Here's where that inner voice and oftentimes inner courage comes into play. Do we trust it? In my opinion, yes, you do. But everyone must decide for themselves. So with basic decision making, oftentimes you will have the facts that you need. Maybe you can project your outcome based on historical results or the results of how someone else has done it in the past before you. Information is fairly readily available in some form or fashion for you to put the pieces in place to make an optimal decision, link it with the desired consequence, collect enough data, and then tweak the decision enough to reduce the uncertainty and then structure it in a way that gives you the best odds for success. Okay, so an example of a basic decision might be, let's say, um, to pay off a loan in a set amount of time. Fairly straightforward decision with readily available information to reduce uncertainty and then structure for a high likelihood of success, right? But we are going big, remember? I did want to lay the groundwork for basic decision making because I think that's important. But I really want to talk about complex decisions, the gray area. So complex decisions are just like they sound, complex. They have murky qualities to them that make them difficult to go through the decision-making process, and they basically, well, freak us the heck out. (laughs) This is for many reasons, which I'll go over so you can understand them, but honestly, I can't help but think much of it is related to the universal natural instinct for humans to fear the unknown. What is under that murky water? I don't know, you be the judge, but I saw fear of the unknown blinking in bright neon lights written all over when I was researching the subject. What is funny is that I had no idea complex decisions would be so linked to last week's podcast topic regarding conquering fear of the unknown when I decided to tackle this subject this week. It literally kind of gave me that eerie goosebumps, everything is meant to happen for a reason feeling, if you know what I mean. Like somehow that inner voice just magically picked the perfect segue this week. So some qualities that make a decision complex are decisions which are original or unique. These are often creative or innovative endeavors. These can also just be decisions or experiences which you've personally never embarked on before. Basically, these are any decisions which have limited data available to analyze and use to project the future outcome, which in turn doesn't allow you to reduce the uncertainty and calculate your odds for success, thus launching them outside of the normal decision-making process, therefore making them complex. Another attribute that could constitute a complex decision is those involving other people. As Forrest Gump correctly said, or maybe it was his mama, I can't remember. (laughs) But people are like a box of chocolates. You never know what you are going to get, right? (laughs) So people have different perspectives, mindsets, goals, etc. Other people can either help or hinder your decision making and your desired outcomes with a quickness. If you have multiple people impacting your decision-making variables, they can throw in a major wild card, thus making the decision complex. The next attribute of a complex decision involves taking action and going into the unknown. So just like the antidote to conquering fear from the last podcast, another attribute of a complex decision is you will probably have to start taking action before you will fully realize the full potential of your options. All your options will not be on the table at the initial time of the decision 
most likely. As you go forward though, more options will then become available. Sounds a lot like going outside of your comfort zone to expand, doesn't it? Hmm. <laughs> the final attribute of a complex decision I'm going to cover is that measures of success may not be immediately available or it may be slow to obtain measures or tangible data that you can see and touch to validate these types of decisions. As you can imagine, this can make an already complex decision feel even more complex. So let me break down the lessons as I see them with complex decisions. First, follow your inner guidance because you will often not have the facts, charts, and historic data to project your results. This is what makes this complex, so you will need to trust your inner voice along with your own skill set, value, and abilities. Second, it will take action, time, faith, and perseverance to ultimately see your desired results regarding complex decisions, but they will be worth it. Think how long it took the Wright brothers to see the first successful airplane model take flight. They had a complex decision they were dealing with by the absolute true definition. Third lesson is people by nature can make decisions complex and can throw a wrench in your desired outcomes. This is why it's especially important to have good people you can trust in your corner. And finally, don't ever let fear stop you from making a decision that you want to go for. If Henry Ford let fear stop him, we'd still be riding horses to work every day. Or like I mentioned, the Wright brothers. Think of all the beautiful, majestic places we'd never be able to see if they had let fear stop them from making the complex decisions and then followed through with to put the airplane in flight. Sometimes people look back at decisions and wish they would have done them differently. A good test of a decision is whether you would have made the same decision again if you had had the same information in the same circumstance. Just because you haven't gotten the desired outcome yet doesn't mean it was a bad decision. It's never too late to go for your dreams in life. The only bad decision is when you give up on yourself. Failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. That is Henry Ford's own words of wisdom to us, my friends. So please subscribe, rate, and review. I so appreciate all of your support. You can find my blog on mindyourmoneycoach.com as well as my personal coaching services there as well. Until next time, everyone. Mind your money.